And here we go. The one. The only. Strangely, with a name that's not some butchered Latin kind of style, it's just a gladiator. Just a gladiator. We have the three different versions. The Valiant. Tank hunting at a short range. Super aggressive. The Reaper for just annihilating swaths of infantry. And the Lancer, long range tank hunting with some support weapons for anything that gets close. Welcome, everybody. Hello. <laughs> the Russell Grove tanks, yeah. And it might even throw a phone at you. You never know. He's another actor who... Uh, he did some not nice stuff to people, but his career didn't suffer for it. And stay. All right. So it's a big kit, so it's got the, the tray, which is nice. Keeps everything in one place. Directions. Ooh. Okay, so they separated out the sprue for... Well, it's got a couple different things, but it has... Basically, it has the turret weapons and then the, a head, which is kind of fun. <coughs> the, um, the little Promethium tank that goes on the back. So that's separate. We've got the turret and then basically the top. So this, these are a lot of the things that's, that uh, differentiate this kit from the Impulsor. So the, again, the Impulsor is the same basic body, but it's open, topped, and back. Uh, they, they call it like the Impala. So this is sort of what's different. And then we have some of the, the side Sponson weapons here. And then just a bunch of extra greebly bits. The, f the fronts of some of the uh, weapons here are here. This is the new style for how you mount this thing on a base. And with this, you can kind of turn it and it can, it looks like it's hovering, obviously with the clear. So that's cool. And then we have the actual tank itself. So here are all of the, the gravity plates that go around the front and the sides to make it hover. Mm -hmm. And then engines. I don't know what all this stuff is, but yeah, I, I have an impulsor kit. I haven't built it yet. So we'll start with the bigger one. And then obviously the the main body parts. So it looks like you still do get interior pieces, uh, even though they're going to be <laughs> covered up and you'll never see them. Now, I don't know... Uh, because I have the Impulsor, but I haven't opened it, I don't know how many of these sprues are... Like, this sprue might might be exactly the same as in the Impulsor kit. Looks like it probably is. But I don't know. Oh, I see another head. There's another head right there. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes there are random heads. Well, this kit, you build it with... Uh, typically, we'll, we'll see what the options are. But there is a little head sticking out at the top. <laughs> Hello! Or hi there, if you prefer. We got a base. Little one. Which is, uh, obviously this tank is much bigger. It overlaps the base once it's done. And then, of course, some decals. Mostly garbage ultramarines. What are you going to do? Okay. Let's let's get organized and then let's get started. I wonder what we start with. I'm guessing I'm guessing we're gonna start with one of these. And not <laughs> not the turrets. But you never know. Yeah, Zardoz, that's I, I assume that's the case. But then I don't know, because apparently with the the repulsor and the repulsor uh what is it, executioner, like there are differences even in the the like the whole 
top and the sides. So, I don't know. Games Workshop is silly. Okay, so now... So whenever you're looking at instructions for something that's a little bit bigger, uh, you'll get sort of all of these little icons that tell you, hey, pay attention. There's something going on in here. The one that we always like to see is the choice of parts, the little three shields. It means you can pick some stuff. Variant assembly is is a little bit, is one step up from that. It's like, okay, this is going to actually build a different version of this, not just some uh, cosmetic stuff. Um, dry fit before. Do not glue is always important so you can think, have things that turn and move and stuff like that. So right off the bat, it's going to tell us we can build either a Valiant or a Reaper or a Lancer. They are different versions in the game, but you see that they only differ by the turret weapon and the sponson weapons. Here and here. This one has a little extra doodad, but it's just part of that same thing. So we'll see when it comes to that build how how all of those things attach and if we can just swap parts or possibly magnetize, but we'll see when we get there. And then the steps are different. So obviously step one is going to be build the actual thing, and then the other steps will be finishing the turrets and the sides. All right, so we're going to dive in with number one. And it looks like we're going to build the main body first. Let's get that going. This kit is... Oh, of course, it doesn't actually have page numbers. I was going to look to see how many pages it was, but it doesn't say. Oh, and then on the back, it does give you these... <coughs> frustrating... Uh, Condensed data sheets. Let's see if I can figure this out again. So it's got 12 wounds. All right, the Valiant version has 12 wounds. Movement 10. Six up. Uh, weapon skill. Three up ballistic skill starting, which degrades. Strength 7, toughness 8. And then the weapons. Yeah. Yeah, so the Valiant has really good weapons, but they're only 24 inches. So. Gotta be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. How's everybody doing on this Wednesday? We're about halfway done with this week. Which is nice. How are you doing? I'm just cold. You're cold? Yeah. Well, put on some socks, silly person. No, my body is cold, not my feet. Well, your body, your feet are part of your body. Or so I've been told. Put on a hat. You lose more heat from your head than anywhere else. <laughs> Good, Bill Dress. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Uh... Yeah, I mean, look, I get, I get the idea of why, of why they have this again, so they don't have to print pages and pages of, of uh, data sheets in other languages. But it, it is weird. It's just something new that we have to get used to. It's not, it's, it isn't so bad. Uh, we should probably talk about the app, I guess. Man, Games Workshop is really... Oh, how is the Space Lego Assembly? Benjamin, how is the Space Lego Assembly coming? Good. I'm, I'm, I, I just started bag four. Bag four of... The Space Lego. No, of how many, how many total bags are there? Eleven. Okay, so we're on bag four of eleven. <laughs> and you've built a couple buildings and a bunch of people, right? Um, I've built about four people. Okay, four people. And one like little workshop, and a, and one building, and then a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Well, then you built a little robot and a little um, drone, right? Some kind of. Uh... No. No. Okay. 
I don't know. I, I built a drone in another set. We're not a drone, but like a little, um, a little vehicle of some kind, right? Oh yeah, the rover. Some kind of, oh, the rover. Okay. Well, when you were done with big pieces, or when we're done with the whole thing, I'll definitely share pictures with everybody. I'm gonna work on more tonight, and probably gonna finish bag four and start bag five. Cool. And you've and. You've done all of that so far yourself, right? Yeah. Nice. So now when we say go to your room, you're like, all right, I'm going to go work on my Legos. <laughs> oh my goodness, my phone is blowing up over there. What's going on? Who knows? Yeah, no, he's... It was... Benjamin, it was it wasn't that long ago when you really like like now I can do Legos by myself, and then you really started excelling at all that you're building. Okay. I think God. the last biggest one was the last one I did. Mm -hmm. It was like the giant rover. Oh yeah, neat. No. Um, I did the space shuttle one. Mm hmm But, but still the... Oh, and that creepy, rover. what is that, that, what's that Lego line called with the, um, where the, you can use the AR game oh, yeah, and it turns into yeah. ghosts. It's kind of Scooby-Doo-ish. one where you could scan for ghosts. Yeah. And then there's one where you don't need to scan, you just fight. Yeah. Well, you are a ghost. And you get yeah, the, that, the app was okay, but the the kits are cool. All right, so we have the base, and you can see obviously these are where all of these little um, uh, grav plates are going to attach to. It's it's like a studded leather thing right now, but we don't do that yet. First, we attach. So these are going to be the rear compartments. And go on something like wait, how do these go on? I like this. Nope, like that. So there we go. So this is gonna be the interior, and you can see of course. So this is where the space marines where their backpacks plug in, their power generators, they get power from they get powered up by the vehicle before they get out. Also basically locks them in place. And then of course we've got skulls and Purity seals, because why not? Put them inside. Uh, yeah, so I was going to mention... So Games Workshop is really trying to make this app a thing. Sort of like Fetch. Uh, I would say the, the initial rollout was... I don't know if you want to use the word disastrous, but that I think that about covers it. So they're trying to make up for it. They've they have added a bunch of new content. It's still behind a Technically you can get the app for free. But if you really want any of the content, you have to subscribe. Which is I think 4.99 a month, but then that just gives you the basic content and then you still need to buy your codex and then get the, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a whole thing. It's not, it's, it's not great. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not great. Now from what I, I don't have the app. I have not cared enough to, to try it, but it does look like with this late, this latest edition, it is actually useful now. Now, does it give you any more content or ability than Battle scribe? Uh, no. So if you have Battle scribe and you're used to that, it doesn't seem like there's really a need for this official app as of now. But, you know, we'll see what they do to it going forward. The neat thing is, uh, as Zardoz said, is that they just announced this morning that they're running a, they're running a promotion. Get the app. Sign up for it. Subscribe. 
build your ideal army, tweet it out to the world, and one lucky person will win his or her army for real, which is pretty cool. I hope that drums up some... All right, so we have the rear compartment. Done. Hopefully that'll drum up some interest, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Next, we're gonna build the uh, the barrier between the front section and the rear section. Yeah, exactly. It's just. I'm sure somebody will win. <laughs> well, we could all run out there and do it right now, and then, yeah. What what are our odds? How many people? How many people worldwide do you think are uh, are getting the app right this very moment? Okay, so we've got a little screen here, and then the other compartment is. Oh, I should probably check. Make sure I'm getting the exact right parts. Okay, 18, good. But again, I mean, we're all so used to... Oh, and I haven't checked to see... I assume you can't just build a, you know, build a 10,000 point army and expect to get all of that stuff. I assume there, there's some limitation to the size of the army you build. And I'm sure it can't include Forge World and... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the actual... Uh, oh, okay. $1,000. There we go. All right. It's like, all right, well, I'm just going to build a, a Titan Maniple. And then, of course, oh man, because then it then it begs the question. Well, Zeno's players, you know, who knows? You might be getting some new models eventually. But no, you have to build just with what you have at the moment. I don't know, one thousand dollars. That's not even that's not even that many kids. I mean, I wouldn't turn it down, but. Uh, all right, so we've got two of these guys. We need this side connecting to... It looks like a puzzle. Okay, this side. There we go. And then we glue it together. And then it becomes this separator wall so they can have privacy in the back. While the drivers up front have to stay separate. It's like in a limousine when you put up the divider. That's what this is. When the people in the back want their, you know, their special time. Speaking of, sort of, uh, I just finished the latest Fabius Bile novel, which had some very interesting little little tidbits in it. Um, overall, it was good. The ending was... You know, it was not as good as I, I was hoping for. But um, I'll talk about it more on Saturday once I get the... Uh, once I get all my thoughts together. Okay, so the two little divider parts are gluing together. Put that over here. I'm just going to slather some glue on here so I can put it in place. Where does it fit? Mm. Yeah, so it's the Fabius Bile story that's sort of current. Almost current in 40k. 
It does end with an interesting note about, and this is like the most minor of all spoilers, because we already know from everything that that in current era 40K, Fabius Bile is looking to get a hold of samples of Primaris Marines and maybe, you know, do some kind of stuff with that, as he does. So yeah, it, the book ends with that note, with somebody bringing him some some primaris parts and being like hey fabius there's this new thing out there maybe you want to get on that so that that was kind of cool all right so far everything is fitting together well which is nice yeah rabbit wombat that's pretty much how like the internet runs on subscription things is that you sign up it's an auto pay it's not too much money, so when you forget about it and it auto-charges you and you look back at your, your thing, you're like, eh, well, it's only a couple bucks, whatever. I'll remember next month to, uh, to stop it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's how those things work. Subscription stuff is uh, insidious, might be a good word for it. The company that I used to work for had some... We had some subscription programs... It's all about getting people on that hook. All right, so next we're building these little, I don't know, grav somethings. Grav somethings. That's what they are. I need 4 and 25 and 3 and 24. You know, it's been a while since it's been a while since I did a giveaway. Maybe I'll do another giveaway this this Saturday. I like giving things away. People seem to enjoy it. Four and. Twenty-five. Where'd it go? Oh, twenty-four. There we go. I posted a link last night to a good YouTube channel, Auspex Tactics. Talk about all sorts of. It's pretty much all in-game stuff. Their their gimmick is they want you to get the most out of your models. So it's like, okay, how does how does this unit play in this edition? How can you make it better? What are some synergies? Things like that. Not so much lore, but um, just like actual in-game stuff. And uh, their videos are pretty good. <laughs> I'm endlessly fascinated though because the. The guy who talks on these videos, he's from somewhere in the UK. I don't, I'm not good enough at uh, accents and things to know exactly where, but he has the most interesting cadence to his voice. So my wife always, she always notes when when I when that guy comes on, but it's like every every sentence starts at this tone, goes down in the middle. It's like a horseshoe, and then comes back up at the end. I can't even I can't for the life of me even do a good impression of it. You gotta listen. You'll you'll know what I'm talking about almost immediately. But yeah, it's really interesting. And unfortunately though, it's it's so it's so lulling. Like you just get used to that cadence and then I'll, a couple minutes will go by and I'll make wait, 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 I, I didn't actually hear anything he just said. I was just listening to the uh the cadence, the tempo of his, his talking. But I do recommend that one. That one's fun. Um, I also started... There are about five or six Warhammer YouTube channels that I listen to, if not watch. Um, Something Titans. What, what the heck is that one? Uh, they're the guys who did that uh, terrain video. A couple weeks ago, that was really good. 
They have pretty good battle reports. They're so long. But um, I, I like the start of them, at least. And there's one that's called Tactical Tortoise. Tabletop Titans. Thank you, Zardoz. That's, that's that one. Yeah, then Tactical Tortoise, which is pretty good. And again, that's that's similar to Ospex Tactics, and it's like it's just about the models and how, or the units rather, and how they play, and they go through, you know, what um, you know what sub faction would be good for this, what um, what stratagems and all that kind of stuff, which is which is neat because it's not something I necessarily think about when I'm looking to build an army. I'm thinking more fluffy and what looks cool. So yeah, I can recommend those. If anybody's looking for some YouTube to zone out on. Okay. And in theory, these just pop in like so. Nice. If you all have any favorite YouTubers for Warhammer stuff, let us know. Uh oh, did I just grab the wrong one? That was silly. <laughs> okay, there we go. You're dealing with identical parts on different sides. You can't remember which which one is which. Good. So these little nozzle-like things. Uh, Zarna says, Glacial Geek GMG Mini Wargaming. Yeah, Mini Wargaming I've, I've got. Uh, I don't know Glacial Geek. I'll look, that, look up that one. Cool. Nice. We should put together a list of uh, of good people, and there are still some pretty popular U Warhammer YouTubers that uh, they're not necessarily the best people. So we could also issue some warnings on these guys might be popular, but they're problematic. Okay, so now we put this aside, and we're going to start building the the walls, which include... Welcome, Jessa! Hopefully you're having a good morning. Hello. So the walls, which include some of the grav plate, um, at least the interior stuff, these little, all these little peg, where you'll add the little actual plates on the outside... I don't know what, they, I'm sure there are technical words for all of these things. But, uh, yeah, cool, let's do it. So we get in some of these other big pieces. So we need side piece number 26, which is, ah, this one. Yeah, there are a lot of, U a lot of Warhammer YouTubers out there, and... It's kind of shocking. Like you'll go to one and they'll be, you know, they'll have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's like, oh my god. But hey, people are looking for content. YouTube is an interesting place. They attach these things to the sprues, like in between these raised areas. <laughs> Trying to get the, the clipper in there. Clean up. Yesterday, yesterday or the day before, Games Workshop put out their annual listicle. Well, I guess it's it's not really an article, it's pretty much a list, but it's the, hey, do you know somebody who's into Warhammer? 
here are the things that you can get that person for the holidays. And <laughs> the lists are always so funny because at some point, oh, thank you, Raiden. Because I love how you'll you'll go through the list and in, inevitably it'll say, oh, and here's something good for a stocking stuffer. Read something cheap. And it's usually one of three things. One of the handful of ancient kits that Games Workshop keeps around that gives you just either three or five infantry models in a little tiny box. And they're just, they're if they're not push fit, at least they're just monopose. And there's, there's very little to them. The models are decades old, but it's the only thing that Games Workshop sells substantively that's, you know, under $25. So it's always like, oh, which one of those is going to be on the list this time? And hey, it's the Chaos Cultists this time. Huzzah. Which is actually by far one of the best of those little kits. I would say. Because they're actually useful models. They actually still look good even though they're very old. I have lots and lots of... Uh, of boxes of those that I've built over the years. But yeah, it's pretty funny. And then they divide up the list. It's like, oh, do you do you know somebody who likes board games? Well, we have things that are like board games. Do you have somebody who just wants whatever's new? Here's what's new. Like, okay, calm down. Uh, if you are unaware... If you're interested at all in Warhammer or anything else that Games Workshop makes, Games Workshop has a wish list system built into their websites, both on the regular site and on Forge World. So you can actually make your own wish lists just to keep track of stuff that you're looking at or to send to somebody um, who is looking to buy you something, which can be very handy. Okay, so now. Well, now I'm starting on this sprue, which is a little daunting, but here we go. Uh, Zardoz, what is what is still up for sale on GW? Tell us, tell us. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, those are some of the least good ones. I mean, they're okay, but... It's just not, they're not great. But that is interesting because the the holiday bundles usually sell out very quickly. Okay, I need part number 31, the rear set of plates, which should be this guy right here. Yeah, for the for the Astromil Tarum, it's just it just doesn't include what you really want, and then for the Space Marines, it's units that, again, they're they're they're, just, they're not fantastic. So either, either like me, I already have a bunch of those units and I don't need more, or if you're starting a new army, like that's not really where you want to start. You know, start your stuff. Yeah, exactly, Rabbit Wombat. This, this stuff isn't bad. It's just not necessarily what you want. The idea is you buy one of those boxes to start an army, and they're not really the best for that. And you never know. You can get all conspiracy theory that Games Workshop is trying to use that to get rid of inventory, and those kits are then going to get changed. Who knows? But yeah. And also, I think, especially with Astro Militarum and armies like that, Games Workshop gets stuck because... Obviously, they need to put out products that are starter armies in a box, right? Start collecting or this kind of thing. But they they don't want to make it the same exact set every time because then how do you sell more at different levels? So they try like, oh, well, all right, instead of a Lehman Russ, we'll put this thing in there. Wait, but everybody wants a Lehman Russ because that's the best thing. I'm sure there's some, some degree of that going on. All right. So all these parts are ready to go. Let's see. So we got this thing. 
plugs. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> As I get my finger stuck. Don't do that. I know I used to have a, a, I think they call it a gift list on Games Workshop, but I haven't updated that thing in forever. Oh, my uh, Orca Whale um, symbol for, um, for my shoulder pads. They've shipped. And that was very interesting. It took a while for them to ship, which is fine. You know, it's a it's a company. They're printing their own stuff. And they talked about on the website that they've got these. Some of their stuff is still made from. It's Pop Goes the Monkey, which again they make all sorts of cool uh, third party bits for Warhammer. Some symbols, lots of symbols rather, and things and shoulder pads that Games Workshop doesn't do, and you can get them from them. So some of their stuff is made from Shapeways, but then they offer their own, some of their own stuff printed with monkey resin, as they call it, which is kind of cute. And it says on the website that they've got different people printing in different places, so you know, place your order, and then you never know exactly how long it's going to take or where it's coming from, but you know, it'll all work out in the end. So I said, okay. So I placed my order. It takes a little while for them to print it and ship it out. And I get the shipping notification, and it's coming from the Netherlands. I was like, oh, wow. That's uh, that's far. I didn't... Shipping wasn't cheap, but it wasn't what I would expect for something shipping from Europe. But I guess it's cost-effective for them to do it that way. Oh man, Sardas, if they did a starter set with two Lehman Russes in it, that would sell out instantly for sure. Okay, so now so we filled in the this intake thing on the side. I don't know why this tank would necessarily need an intake. I don't know how the engines work, but that doesn't matter. And then this little doodad back here. And now we're going to start these two grav things. All right, how does this how does this go on? I have no idea. Like that? That doesn't look right. Like this? That doesn't look right. How are these? Oh, oh, inside, inside. There we go. <laughs> that makes much more sense. Okay, cool. And that gives me a really good place to glue it. I need to get some more plastic glue at some point. I don't want to run out. That's a nightmare, right? You're right in the middle of building a kit and you run out of glue. No. Oh my god, especially if I was on stream. That would be horrific. Okay. And then this one. I see little dots. Oh yes. They all fit in the dots. Good. Fun fact. While I have a bunch of models for Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines, and I have a bunch of vehicles. I've only built a couple of them. Most of the vehicles I have, I got secondhand when I was first starting out in this hobby. And then for a while, I was very daunted by the prospect of building vehicles. Now, not so much. I don't mind. I even paid a couple of people to build things very early on. The Storm Raven and a Land Raider. I was very intimidated by those kits. 
Okay, so now we have one side panel complete with these little doodads. Let that dry and start the next one. Obviously, same process on this side. Cuts. Yeah, Astro Militarum is absolutely one of the one of the factions that really could use a refresh in some of the existing models and just some more options. Now, I'm not saying that they should necessarily get it before some Xenos get some updates. I fully understand and recognize the plight of those players. But yeah. I want everybody to get new models. I want everybody to be happy. And I've said it before, I am always, even as a Space Marine and Chaos Space Marine player, I am happy when Games Workshop focuses on other factions because it gives me a break from the from the breakneck pace at which they release models for my armies that I have to try to keep up with and figure out what I can afford to get, what I can skip over. Like, please, stop releasing Space Marines for a few weeks at least. Give me time to catch up. And I know that's blasphemy. That's heresy of the highest order. When they really, when they revealed that new Ultramarines captain the other day, and everyone just was like, seriously? Another Ultramarines character? Screw you, Games Workshop. That was too funny. Okay, where's the little... There it is. Yeah, I mean, they went so far to make the different regiments in the lore so interesting, and even the different rules they have, and in the artwork, they're so distinct. And they're like, oh, but make models for them. Ha <laughs> ha. Why would you want models for these things that look so different from other, from this, you know, the, the standard... Yeah, you can just like kit bash your own somehow. Pop. So probably the next time up. Uh, Actually, you know what? On sat, I think on Saturday, we'll do. We'll do a poll on Saturday for. What version of this tank we're going to look at? And obviously, like I said, once once I get to the turret section, we'll see if things can be swapped in and out or magnetized. Um, I don't know. Actually, if any of you have heard or built this kit, you can let me know. Um, I just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, Talnak, that's exactly what I. That's what I can't stand is like even when we're even when Games Workshop is focusing on another race, Xenos, at some point, like it'll be like and this month it's all it's all Drukari. But we've got a special space marine thing mixed in. It's like, God damn it. Give me a month. Give me a month when I don't have to buy something new. <laughs> or lament that I can't buy everything. And again, I know I know how privileged I am. <laughs> as a Space Marines player, that there is so much stuff that I have to pick and choose. But yeah, give other people things. Yeah, and there used to be more of the other regiments available in kits. And sometimes they come back and Games Workshop does these special um, limited runs. Uh, the the phrase they use escapes me. Uh, made to order. Like, yep, yeah, we have these old molds, but we're only going to run them 
you know, for a couple of weeks. So how many people actually want this thing again? And that's cool. I, I always like when they do that. And I hope, hope, I hope that people take advantage of that when they come up. I've, I bought a couple of the made to order stuff. I think in every case it was models that almost immediately afterwards became legends, but that's fine. No, <laughs> Tonic, I, I, I think, uh, I think you're right. Yeah, the Space Marines have just a disgusting amount of available units these days. And the sheer amount of ways you can play Space Marines is pretty crazy. That's one of the reasons why I like that um, Auspex Tactics video so much is that it just, it really, you know, showed you all the, the different, the different options you have with the different uh, chapters, especially. And they, they really do feel like completely different armies. Yeah, the last call for randos for the army. Yeah. Yeah, some of the major stuff is like, wow. Uh, first of all, why was that ever a kit? <laughs> Second of all, you think people still want that? But hey, look, there's there's something for everyone. Okay, it was like that. Give me one second. I just want to make sure. Make sure nothing crazy is going on. Uh, link tree, this, that. Okay. Nothing important. I don't know if we're going to see the slave girls come back. I don't know how uh, how that would be viewed these days, but you never know. Okay, we have another side completed. Let that dry. Yeah, I just attach those. Okay, you go over there and dry. Attach you. All right, let's see how this works. You know what? I'm going to look at the instructions. Okay, this lines up here in theory. And what am I missing? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So the important parts are that clearly that it lines up here in the front and then here-ish and then in the back. And you'll see there are there are little tiny gaps underneath these, but those are going to be covered up by the plates so they don't have to be... So those gaps are on purpose, essentially. You don't have to worry about there being little tiny holes there. At least that's what I think is happening. So I need just a whole bunch of glue. Just trying to trying to keep track of where I want the glue to go. Because you never want to use too much glue. Number one, just because it's a waste. And number two, because you don't want the glue spilling out and showing. So that's that side. All right. Let's do it.
And you know what I always say, when in doubt, add more glue. Oh, stinky. That'll that'll get me started. And go. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Come on. Oh, glue don't fail me now. Come on. There we go. Yeah, so again, you can see all these little these little bumps for those plates that'll go on later, which is a big chunk of that sprue. At least some of them are connected. A handful of them are separate little pieces. Some are all attached, so you just have to do the one, the one big piece. I am kind of stuck holding this for just a minute. Well, that's okay. Tonight. On the Pete Wiz channel. With special guests. To be announced. Leading up to the event and at the time. Uh, we're doing a <clears throat> special episode of our Myths and Video Games show. But we will not simply be watching a video game pre-recorded. We will be playing the game. We are going to play Among Us. Uh, and we are going to be playing as mythological characters. Trapped in that situation. It promise, promises to be very silly, but very fun. I got the game. Uh, I poked around at it a little bit last night. But this will actually be my first time playing the game. So I hope I understand how, how it works. Uh, as you all know, I'm not I'm not a video game player, but uh, I think I think I can manage this one. Pete has figured out the technical wizardry required for this event. So yeah, that should be neat. So yeah, that'll be five o'clock tonight over on Pete Wiz, the Pete Wiz channel. So tune in if you're around and available. And yeah, that'll be our 2020 finale. We'll be back uh, in January at some point for more shows. And more games. Um, was it the side or... This was the part that needed more glue on the other one. Good. Make sure everything is straight and attaching correctly. Looks like a good fit. 
Mostly. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I just... <laughs> It's funny on the the little free play part of the the game on Steam where you can just run around and just see what it looks like and what the little what the, all the little tasks are like. Uh, you don't get to practice as the imposter, just as the human. So it's like okay, I got just got to remember if I'm the imposter, all the things I need to do. But it should be good. And I have seen other people play the game. So I do have some idea of how it works. Okay. Look at that. Almost ready for battle. Not quite. I think I can set that down. So then we're going to close it up, starting from the front. Front, top, and top of the back, and then the back. Yeah, so with the, so the next five parts will completely cover up all of that interior. Which again, this, this back part is open on the Impulsor model. Although... Places like Pop Goes the Monkey sell 3D printed covers and other little things you can do with the back area if you don't want it to be open on yours. And I can understand that. Both for aesthetics and for painting. If you don't want to paint an interior of a vehicle, and also, you know, it's kind of cool if it's closed up, buttoned up, heading out onto the battlefield. Why has everything got to be open? Why do all these people come into battle without helmets on? Valid questions. Okay, where's part number eight? Here's where I get a little bit concerned with the, the parts fit in because I have these two sides, but now all of this stuff needs to go along the top and hopefully attach to everything smoothly. And you never know if a little bit of, a little bit of sway over here is going to affect how things fit over here when it all goes together in the end. But I have faith. Faith in the Emperor. Faith in my fingernails. Okay. Yeah, I at least want to get this front piece on so I can make sure that things are working. How does this little thing go in here? Like that? It's like that? I hear there are many epic holiday celebrations in in Wombat Nation. This little thing just gets apparently just jammed right in there. Okay, cool. Oh, you know, one thing this kit doesn't do or I guess does So here, 
It's a little hard to see, but right here, these little holes, where my fingers going in. These are where you put the headlights. And there's a there's all this classic stuff with the old Rhino where you can put the headlights in, basically in different ways. So there's a little light and then essentially like a little sensor next to it. And you can build it with the lights on the outsides or the lights on the insides. And then sometimes if you weren't paying attention, you'd have one going one way and the other going the other way. And it would look lopsided like you were like the tank was looking in one direction or the other. But this one gets rid of that because it's primary, so it's better. Okay, cross your fingers that this fits. Oh, look at that. Looks good. Whew. I was a little nervous. I won't lie. Okay, glue on the front of this and the sides here. Hey, John! If you, <laughs> if you have faith in the Emperor, then your faith is dead. No, the Emperor... He's still there. He's he's hanging out. He'll be back. Yeah, I gotta go get more glue. Cool. <laughs> Upside down wings on orc airplane sounds perfect. Yeah. Again, it's not like the it's not like the aerodynamics are actually doing anything. That's funny. Okay. I think it's a little bit of a gap underneath. Not that it matters. I just, again, hope that it doesn't affect anything further on in the build. Let's get, let's get one more part on here. Let's get this top section. And then we'll call it a day. Where are my headlights? My headlights are 44 and 45, which are not on this sprue. So they must be on this one. Yes, right in the middle. I guess these kind of do have the little, the light and the little sensor. There we go. I lost a piece for a second. Yeah, any other any other army that would be disastrous, but for Ors, like, eh, that's cool. In the grim darkness of the far future, we need headlights. 
So these itty bitty things go in like this. So just, can we get a focus? There we go. So you see there's a little light and then little dots. So again, you just want to make sure that they're facing the right way. This one, you actually, you can't, you can't mess it up on this one because of the way the piece is shaped to fit in there. Like I said, on the, on the Rhino kits, you could, you could mess it up. Now, do I want the lights on the inside or the outside of these? So that's what it looks like with the light on the inside. And that's what it looks like with the light on the outside. Hmm. This is a tough decision. Although I think I'm leaning toward lights on the inside. So the idea that you want the most concentrated light to be right in front of your vehicle, not going out to the sides. And if there is a sensor or something, you want that to be seen at a further angle. Does that make sense? I should see what the box art shows. So my inclination is to build it this way. I don't know. Let's see what the box shows. Oh, the box agrees with me. Lights on the inside. Okay. Well, there you have it. Oh, nice, Rooney Duck. Your Tyranid Brood Swarm has shipped more bugs. Eat more biomass. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit lightheaded from all of this glue. It just sort of sucks all the oxygen away. All right, headlights deployed. Good. <laughs> Turn signals on a gladiator. <laughs> there is an old joke about turn signals on a land raider. Actually, I don't know where that joke comes from. And I know they use it for the comics. Ooh, so now it doesn't fit quite as well. Nope. Oh. Ha, never mind. Just needed to get that pop. Wait, hold on. Don't pop fully yet. I got to add glue. Okay. Uh, glue on the inside of the sides, the top of the front and back. Yes. Okay, that should be enough glue. Ooh, <laughs> that's a lot of glue. Let's get that pop. Nice. Definitely still need to hold it down with a little bit of force, but it's looking good. Huh, Rabbit Wombat says some modern tanks actually have turn signals and even have horns they can honk. That definitely does seem odd, but sure. 
but do they use them in battle? I mean, I guess it helps when you're moving things around on base and around your your allies. Yeah, why not? Okay, I'll hold this for a minute more. But yeah, we've basically made most of the impulsor if we were building one of those. Like I said, next up we're going to add the top and the back. And then I think, let's see. Yeah, and then we start in on the, the engines and all of the, the grav plate in, which goes for just a couple more pages. And then we get to decide on the variant. Which version, what can be magnetized, if anything? Which we'll look at next time. If I have a chance, I'll try to cut out some pieces in advance so we can start playing with it. But I usually don't have time to do much, <laughs> much in advance. That's true. If you don't have turn signals, you can't drive it on the road. You got to pack it up. Pack it up. Okay. I think it looks pretty good. Nice. Look at that. Definitely on our way. Ooh, one of the interesting things about turn signals is that here in the United States, turn signals, I, at least this used to be as of 10 years ago, I don't know if things have changed, but turn signals here are made with yellow amber lights. But in Europe, they can be made in pretty much any color. So at least, again, it used to be that for Porsches that were, if you bought a Porsche here in the United States, it would come with amber lights. But one of the things that a lot of Porsche owners immediately did was swap those out for European turn signals, um, which were clear instead of yellow. Because, yes, for a while I worked in Porsche parts. Don't ask. Long story. I didn't install them. All right. Well, I'm excited. This thing looks really cool. I like the size of it. And I look forward to continuing next time. And then you get on to all the silly things that people call them. Turn signals, flashers, uh, side markers. There are a bunch of different terms for it, depending on what, what, uh, what country you're in. Yeah, laws are, laws are slow. Blinkers, yeah. <laughs> all right, who else is on right now that anybody wants to go and see? Let's find out. So yeah, again, we've got the this special game of Among Us on Myths and Video Games tonight, Pete Wiz channel. Again, Myths and Video Games is usually at 3 p.m., but this will be a special time at 5 p.m. Get some more people involved. Oh, I see our good friend John is on. We'll pass it over to him for a little bit more. Well, I assume he's building models. Uh, I don't know. Building or painting, which he's usually doing. Let's get this thing going. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great Wednesday uh, and a great Thursday. I will not be on tomorrow, but I will be back on Friday for Figure Friday. Find something cool to do then. Oh, don't no, I don't want to run an ad break. No, thank you. I just want to raid a channel. One of these days it will open and I'll be able to pick something. Come on. There we go. Nope, it's not going to. Any minute now. Any minute.
Okay, here we go. It's happening, folks. It's happening. I promise. Okay, so go say hi to John and have a great day. And hopefully I see some of you later. All right. With that, goodbye. Okay, I am offline.